lesson in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, with Ephesians chapter 6, by the way, next week we're going to start on 1 Peter, 1 Peter, that's been a, a book that's been on my heart for a little while, and I've been, been excited doing some preparation for that. So Ephesians chapter 6, I'm so excited about First Peter, I turn to First Peter. Galatians, uh, let's see, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, yeah. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to pick up on verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and lo, excuse me, and how I do. Tychicus, my beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Now, uh, sorry, I, <laughs> I had to apologize because in my notes, I also turned to First Peter, not, not Ephesians. But, um, one of the things that uh, that I, I guess, I don't know if contentious is the right word to say, but one of the hardest things to teach on is prayer. Because I won't say that we do it wrong. Amen? You know what I'm saying? If you're, you're talking with your Heavenly Father, you're doing it right. Amen? So I don't want you to think, oh, I, I, I didn't do this, so therefore uh, I, I, it, it didn't get to heaven. I, I remember um, uh, I, I used to think that like the phrase in Jesus' name was like a heavenly postage stamp, that if you said it, it would go to heaven. But if you didn't say it, because you had to pray in Jesus' name, so you had to say it. If you didn't say it, it wouldn't get to heaven. And then, you know, I, I grew in grace and I learned a little bit more that uh, there's a lot of times we say the phrase in Jesus' name when the prayer wasn't in Jesus' name. We do understand that, that when it says that we need to pray in his name, believing, it doesn't mean that we need to tack on that phrase. Believe it or not, your prayer will work and get God's attention even if you don't say in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, to pray in Jesus' name means that you're praying according to his authority, to his mind. If, uh, you know, if you can imagine, uh, by the way, uh, Robert and Natalio and their families, uh, everybody's kind of on the men's now, and they said, all, both, all groups said that we should see them Sunday. Um, uh, so that's, that's great. But if you can imagine, you know, Robert... Robert is, is a man's man. You know, he's just, he's just going to go and do stuff. And, and, uh, and Robert just kind of goes uh, full steam ahead. And, and, uh, and he's just a grown man. Now, if you could imagine uh, his son, Jane, saying, Dad, do this. And he'd go, hold on, hold on a second. Uh, I'm your father. You need to ask these things. Because uh, there's an authority structure. But if you could imagine, James says, 
hey, dad, do this. And he goes, hold on. He says, no, 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 Pastor Pickett needs you to do this. Ah. See, he's, he's asked in my name and by my authority. And therefore, a lot of the other things are just moved out of the way. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, in the same way, you know, if, uh, if Dakota comes to me and says, Dad, stop what you're doing. You're too noisy. I might say, hey, that's, you know, that's not polite. But if he says, hey, Dad, Mom said, stop, you're being too noisy. Well, that carries a little bit more weight. When we pray in Jesus' name, we are praying as he would pray by his authority. And I think that can give us much strength in our prayers because we need to think about what would Jesus pray? Do you think it's a godly prayer? Do you think it's something that Jesus would pray for the salvation of your loved ones? Is that something Jesus would want? I think so. I think, I think when we pray, we can pray with confidence. We can pray with confidence knowing that Jesus hears and when we're, uh, my pastor used to say, the only prayers that can get to heaven first have to start in heaven. God says to come boldly before his throne. Not arrogantly, but boldly. We go boldly knowing what God wants. That's important when we talk about prayer, is we need to understand the mind of God. One of the things that probably as a preacher, which I don't know if it annoys me or just discourages me, is after a service, someone will say, that was such a beautiful prayer. Do you have a copy of that? What are you talking about? I was just talking to God. I, I don't write this down. And there are so many great things about the queen's funeral, uh, uh, the, the ceremony and everything that was going on. but. But me is just kind of, come on, is when they're reading their prayers. I'm like, bleh. Um, you know, when Queen Elizabeth uh, took uh, the throne, one of her very first acts was to, uh, not, not Queen Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth I. You know, Henry VIII's second daughter. Uh, the, the third one on the throne after Henry. Uh, when, uh, after Mary, uh, uh, her mom, also known as, uh, her, her sister, also known as Bloody Mary or Catholic Mary, um, the nation was divided between Protestant and Catholic. So she came up with a great idea. We're going to do a new, a new uh, uh, Book of Common Prayer. And so she made the book of prayer a little less Catholic and a little bit more Protestant. Less Catholic to make uh, the Protestants uh, happy. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. A little bit more Protestant uh, so that it, it, there, there would be a Protestant element. And yet, when I say less Catholic, it would keep a lot of the Catholic elements in there. And so hopefully the Catholics and the Protestants would be happy. And uh, do, you know what, do you know what happened? Both sides hated it. Because it's not going to be one or the other. They, they absolutely hated it. And, and generally, um, we who uh, uh, evangelicals, we don't feel generally that, you know, to write down your prayers and just read it off to God. Um, we, we generally feel that we pray to our heart, have a conversation, um, just like we would with anybody else. Um, we, we also, we don't want to pray in vain repetitions. Uh, again, if you want to see a grumpy Baptist preacher, just have everybody start chanting, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be. Some of you almost started saying it with me. You know, you know, we just blah, got to start saying it. And you know, it's funny. That's also that that's in the same passage that Jesus says, don't pray in vain repetitions. Don't just mindlessly say something. And uh, and even even we were with a bunch of believers and and uh, and as soon as they, they did the Lord's prayer on it, you know, you heard kind of the the droning of it. And I'm just like, oh, come on. 
come on, let's get to the heart. Let's get back to the heart stuff. It was, it was good. So my point is saying that I'm not saying we, we pray wrong. If, if, again, if we're talking with our Heavenly Father, things are great. But I think we need to pray with purpose. We need to pray mindfully. When I speak to my wife, it's communication that I want to be mindful of my communications with her. When I speak to you, it means I'm mindful with what I say. Uh, with God, I think sometimes we, we just hear little cool phrases that we hear. You know, when we say, bless this food to the nourishment of our body, we go, ooh, that's a great phrase. I'm going to now say that phrase when I pray about food, right? Or, uh, or uh, Lord, bless the gift and the give. Ooh, that's a great phrase. Let me add that. Now, is it wrong to say these things? Of course not. But when we, when we just are, are picking up these little cool phrases and they're just automatically popping out instead of from our hearts, there's a problem. Because we don't want to hear the same conversation whenever we talk to people, do we? It's frustrating. I'm not saying God is frustrated. But God definitely wants communication with us. He definitely wants a genuine relationship with us, which is absolutely amazing. And so here, there's just a few little things in these last six, seven verses of Romans chapter six I'd like for us to look at. Can we look at verse 18, please? Ephesians chapter six, verse 18. It says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. In grammar, there's a, there's a word called superlative. Do we know what the word superlative is? You can't get more. You can't get greater. There's kind of um, uh, four superlatives that I see that you just can't get any better, more. In verse 18, you see the word always, praying always with all prayer and supplication and all perseverance and supplications for all saints. See those? Those are, uh, those are some things that, that I'm hoping to hit on. Now let's talk about the word prayer for a minute. Um, what does prayer mean? Prayer is just general requests. Uh, and this is going to be different from the word supplication, which, again, is a specific request. Prayer is for uh, uh, a uh, general request. Supplication is a specific request. All prayer would be all kinds of prayer, public and private. Um, if you look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, 1 Timothy Chapter 2 and verse 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Uh, Paul wrote to the preacher Timothy is, is that, you know, he wishes that, th that men everywhere would pray. Lifting up holy hands. Now, I know it's just the weird people, you know, that lift up their hands, and we as good Baptists, we don't do that. Uh, but I will say, if you look at uh, some of the early, um, early paintings inside the Roman catacombs, you'll see people praying with their hands up. You'll see people standing with it, and, and it's in the idea of worship. Um, I feel a little funny doing it, okay? I don't want to do it because it is something that I just see other people do, and I'll go, oh, well, let me do it. Um, it, is, it is basically when with the hands up, it's, it's the idea of full surrender, full uh, commitment, um, 
I don't think that this is something that's forbidden in Scripture. Um, I don't think that we necessarily uh, need to do it or need not to do it, but we definitely see it. Um, like I said, I feel kind of funny doing it. But in this beginning, going back to Ephesians 6, he says that um, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Uh, and, and look what the frequency of prayer is. How frequent uh, does he say we need to pray? Always. Always. Um, one of the early marks of a believer in Acts chapter 2. Verse 42, this was one of the early um, characteristics of believers is that, uh, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowshipping and in breaking the bread and in prayers. This is a hallmark of a believer. When uh, we've, uh, I remember one time we were in a hospital and there was a Muslim couple. Uh, she was in, in a headscarf and everything like that. And I don't know if they had a child, but they were obviously in, in distress. And I went over to them and I, I said, listen, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm a pastor. Can I pray for you? You know what they said to me? Yes, please. The, the absolute innocence and beauty of when you pray for another person is felt and is communicated. And we need to be in the practice of praying. Uh, when things get really, really bad, you know, we get on our prayer, uh, on our knees and, and pray. I always wonder if we got on our knees beforehand, I wonder if things would have had to get that bad. And I'm not saying God is, is a masochist or anything like that, but I am saying that he understands of what will drive us to come to him. And, and, and that's the relationship. Um, I have been known with other children to turn off uh, the internet if I don't see them long enough and they will come to me. What, what's wrong with the internet? Oh, good, we're talking again. You know, or if, or if my wife is mad at me, you know, I go tighten all the jars and everything like that. And then, you know, you know, and then let's me do something nice for her. And, and then we talk. And, um, but uh, the, the ability to, to pray, to communicate at, at all places. Um, and by the way, if we're praying always, uh, if you're praying while you're driving, is that dangerous? Because we've got to have our head bowed and eyes closed when we pray, right? <laughs> I, I used to do that to the kids. I, you know, we'd, we'd stop, get some fast food, and I'd start driving, and I'd tell, ask one of them to pray, and, and, you know, they would pray, and I'd say, can I open my eyes now? You know, and they'd, Dad! But, but, but of course not. If you look at how people prayed in the Scripture, you see people standing, you see people sitting, you see people kneeling, you see people laying down, you see them praying in the morning. You see them praying in the afternoon. You see them praying at night. You see them praying when things are going good, when things are going terrible. In every circumstance, they are praying. And that needs to be us. So how do we pray continually? How do we pray always? We're always in a, we're always in a communication with the Lord. You will find me sometimes. I'll just say, God, help me with this. And that is my whole Christian prayer about something. Why? My father doesn't need ceremony. And also, I hope that I've been in communication long enough that it's not just me, you know, uh, begging for something. It's me communicating, I'm in trouble. Help. And he hears. Again, we're, we're not to pray in vain repetition. Matthew 6, verse 7 makes that very clear. But if you look in Colossians, Colossians is just a few pages to the right of Ephesians. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, and this is the way we can uh, achieve uh, praying always, is in uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, set your affections on the things above, not on the things of the earth. When we are constantly heavenly minded, it's easier to always be in prayer. Now, I, I do like what, what one 
man said, never be so uh, heavenly minded that you know earthly good. Have you met people that are just so, so spiritual that they don't know how to communicate that they want a cup of tea or something like that? It's, it's just weird. Uh, early believers, believe it or not, they weren't weird. It was just as natural as their life of saying, hey, I got some cats. Or, you know, it's, it's just part of their life. Now, if you look how they pray, in uh, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication. And then there's a little three-word phrase. And what is that three-word phrase? In the Spirit. That's how we need to pray. Not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Again, when we pray, God, what is your mind on this? Lord, what would honor you best in this? Do you know that we are not guaranteed healings? Do we know this? Can God heal? Amen. Can God heal supernaturally? Amen. But are we guaranteed it? No. Can God bring wealth to somebody? Amen. But does he promise us wealth? No. You know, there, there's some things in Scripture that, that I think we, we try to claim a promise that's not even there. And when we pray in the Spirit, we are, again, it's, it's God, what is your view on this? What is consistent with your nature? What is consistent with your will? Have you ever considered what God's will is for something? Do you know that um, it is God's will for some people, uh, and eventually all people, to leave this earth and spend eternity with him? That's not against his will. That's for it. And so when, when there's a tragic thing, it's, it's very hard for me to always pray, God, heal this person. God, heal this person. Make them better. Make them this. Make them this. That, I need to know what God's mind is on this. And if I don't know, sometimes I'll say, Father, um, this person's in trouble. I love them. I, I'm not ready for them to go. Could you keep them around? But Father, if this is not what you want, help me understand it. I mean, I, I really want to know God's mind on this. We should never be presumptuous unless, of course, we know that God is very clear in his word about it. But I will also say this. Prayer is something where if we look in Jeremiah, God had to tell Jeremiah, stop praying for Israel. Because I can't judge them while you're praying for them. Now, I don't know the full dynamic of that. I don't quite get it. All I know is Jeremiah must have had some kind of prayer life. Or God was trying to teach Jeremiah something. But whatever it is, that, that has always fascinated me. When, when God has, uh, like when God told one of his prophets, um, it's not going to rain until you say so. Wow. That's great authority he's giving somebody. That's not just given to the average person. You know, if, if I were to uh, give somebody the keys of my car, I hope you know that I trust that person and I know that person and I think I understand the character of them. God, you know, uh, when, when God does great things through people, it is usually because of the great relationship he has with them. And it's something that will add to it, magnify that. But when we pray in Jesus' name, we need to pray consistently with his nature and with his will. Um, look in Romans chapter 8 and verse uh, 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I like that we have more light bulbs. I like that we have more light, but we need more, more, more light. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, 
The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for us as we ought. But the Spirit itself, making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Sometimes when we pray, I don't even know what to pray. Um, there's one abuse of this verse. Some Christians kind of shy away from it because there are some, uh, some groups out there that will say, you know, this phrase groanings which cannot be uttered is, God, is the Holy Spirit speaking tongues through you. Here's the big problem with that. It says this is going to be groanings which cannot be uttered. Not that will be uttered, <laughs> but cannot be uttered. And But what's important is that God, uh, in the form of the Trinity, is so wrapped up in our prayer life of even when we don't know how to pray, the intercession the Savior makes for us, the communication that the Spirit makes for us, our feeble prayers. Do you ever feel like your prayers are sometimes like really childish? Good. It's okay. We, 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 hear, we hear people go, wow. Listen to those lofty prayers. I can listen to the, that man knows how to pray, maybe. Or maybe they just know how to talk really pretty. But you don't have to worry about how fancy your prayer is. You communicate your heart according to his will. And you know what? The Spirit takes over. The Spirit takes the rest of it. And when we don't know what to pray, it's okay to say, God, I don't know what to pray on this. I have no clue. I, Ruth Ann, I know you've heard me pray that before. I mean, as a pastor, man, when you ask me to pray, I, I, had, a, I had a pastor friend um, commit suicide. Do you know how impossible it is to pray? You know, when a situation hits you, where it just absolutely rocks your foundation. And you're talking to God about it because you need to talk to God about it, but you don't even know what to say. Those are some of the greatest times of prayer when you're just like, I don't want to say anything. This is the time of prayer that we need to have with our Savior. When we, when we pray publicly, when we break up in prayer, sometimes uh, we want to make sure we say all the right phrases. Oh, and Lord, be with, be, with, um, be with Mel, be with the baby, be with this. And, and, and you know what? I understand what you mean. But what if instead of just saying, be with, be with, because we've got so many things to pray for, we don't want to take a lot of time. Why don't we say, Lord, that little baby is in trouble. That little baby is in and out of hospital, Lord. And, and we know the baby is a gift from you, but we're scared. And that's an earnest prayer, isn't it? How about if we tried to make our prayers more Christian and less religious. What, what is the manner of prayer? By the way, we're still in verse 18, aren't we? Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What's the manner of prayer? Watch. Be alert. Know what's coming out of your mouth. Know what you're saying. Um, every once in a while, I have to take stock and how I'm praying. Because when we pray as Christians, we don't say the word um. We say Lord, don't we? We don't say 
and um, this person needs blah, 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 blah. We go, and Lord, you know, it's, <laughs> and I'm not saying that she's using the Lord's name in vain, but we sure aren't being thoughtful about it, are we? Do you get what I'm saying? Watch when you pray. Be alert when you pray. Know what's going on. And I'm not kidding you. I, I hope this revolutionizes some things with you. There have been times in my prayer life where I've stopped and I've opened my eyes to look around me. There's been times I prayed that I thought I wasn't on earth anymore, that I was literally at the throne of glory. Now, again, I know that sounds like the weird and wonderful. I opened my eyes and I was right on planet earth and everything like that. But I'm just telling you, there was such a commune with myself and my Savior, that it was perfect. And there were no heirs. There was pure reverence. And the communication, uh, the, the way uh, my father and I uh, were speaking was, was just magnificent. There's been times that I've, I've told my wife, look, I'm, I'm going away for a day or two. I need to get my my mind right. And, uh, and I know we're not all, quote unquote, able to do it, but maybe we are. But there's been times, do you, do you ever pray and it feels like you're praying to a wall? And your prayer is getting no further than that? Do you? I mean, may, maybe you haven't experienced it. Man, and I, I, my hat goes off to you. But there's been times that, that, that I prayed, and I'm like, God, I'm not praying for an exercise. I'm praying to talk to you. And I'm not going to leave this spot until I'm talking to you. Now, I, the heaven's not splitting open. And he's like, okay, David. Or anything like that. And it may be more of me trying to get my heart stop doing a religious exercise and, and really fight. Not that God doesn't, I don't, you know, have God's attention, but there's so much gook that's separating it. I don't, don't even feel it. I'm trying to read Braille with gloves, trying to eat with a face mask. I'm trying to, to smell things while I'm underwater. It's just not working. And I need to get all these other things out, out, of, out of the way. And, and it's, it's watching. And it says not only do we, uh, are we watching, but it says, um, it says watching, therefore, with all perseverance. Don't quit. Now, we're not like the heathens that we have to keep on ringing a bell or, uh, you, you know, like they do in, uh, do you guys know about prayer wheels? You, you stick a prayer in there and you zing, you spin it around. And every time it goes around, it's another prayer going up. Or better yet, um, what, what you do is, is you light a candle and, uh, and you say a prayer. And as long as that candle is being lit, your prayers are going to heaven. Okay? That's not perseverance. That is where somebody has introduced idolatry to prayer. Now, perseverance is where, God, I'm not done with this. Do you know how many years I've been praying for my father's salvation? I literally have people from college, from when I went to university, Christian university, many, many years ago. And they've said, has your dad gotten saved yet? 25, 30 years, and they're, they remember me praying. Guys, can we pray for my dad? He's lost. Do you know why that prayer was, was there? Because, because it, it was right in front of me. It, it was always on my heart, talking to God about it, not letting it go, persevering, not quitting Watching, therefore, with all perseverance. And then it says, uh, I need more light. Uh, 
and supplication for all saints. The idea of supplication here for all saints is pleading on another's behalf. When you're praying for somebody's salvation, that is pure supplication. The idea of supplication here in the Greek is the idea of bringing forth an olive branch for peace on somebody's behalf. Well, in verse 19 and 20, it says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therefore I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So Paul just asked, uh, just gave an instruction on prayer, and now Paul is given an example of it. He's saying, here, here is how you can pray for me. What did he pray? Paul said, can you pray, believers, that I'll be an effective witness? That's a good thing to pray, isn't it? Pardon me, and he calls himself an ambassador. You want to know what's interesting here? Look again at verse 18. Excuse me, verse 19. Prepare with me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Do you know what he doesn't say? Pray for these people that they'll get saved. You know what he prays? Pray that, that I'll be able to give the, get the message like I'm supposed to. This is very interesting. And I, I wonder, I'm, it's not wrong to pray for lost people, okay? But what is wrong is when we pray for lost people, but we don't go to them. We are called to go, aren't we? We are called to be an ambassador. We are called to give the good news. And so many times... Our, our prayer needs to be, pray that I'll have boldness to do what I'm supposed to do. We have, we have friends and relatives that are lost. Well, listen, let's not share. Listen carefully. When, we, when we're doing prayer requests, let's not share, you know, all the, you know, and they have two really nice, beautiful kids and everything like that. That's all nice and dandy. And, you know, we can tell each other that. But listen, when we pray, when we take prayer requests, let's really consider what we're doing. We are in a spiritual battle. No general, when he's given instructions on how to fight, is, is going to talk about, you know, a playground or, or you know, the, the, the kids or, or this or that. He, he's saying, look, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need to focus on this. We need to focus on this. Let's, let's make sure we focus on what's right when we pray. Again, I don't want you to take away that I'm saying, oh, we're praying rubbish or anything like that. I'm not. Because, again, if we're talking with the Heavenly Father, that's pretty good. But what I am saying is if we look at actually how believers have prayed throughout the centuries, it's different than what we pray today. It used to be that you could call a prayer meeting that would last six, seven, eight, nine hours. We've got Netflix now, so we don't need to do that. When people would pray, they would pray because, and I don't think it was out of vain repetition, but they're in a habit. Oh, it's this time of the day, time to pray. Now, there's other religions that say you have to say this prayer facing this direction at this time. We don't see that in Scripture. I think that's vain repetitions. But why is it that we have the true God, the true gospel, the true everything, and yet we're less passionate about things than the lost are? Maybe because our salvation isn't dependent upon it, but that should motivate us more out of love than out of duty. 
Paul says, pray for me because I'm, I'm supposed to be an ambassador. What is it, an ambassador? An ambassador is somebody that's sent from one country to another country for the express purpose of saying, wow, guys, my home country is amazing. <laughs> We're the best. And I, I really hope you guys can understand. I'm going to communicate that as much as I can. When we have ambassadors that go to other countries from England, uh, from the United Kingdom, they go representing our country. They don't go bad mouthing our country. They don't go, you know, making apologies for our country. They go saying, man, oh, you have one life's lottery if you're from England. And we are an ambassador. We are ambassadors that, that are supposed to go out and say, man, I know you guys live in this country, but let me tell you about my country where I'm from. Let me tell you the love. Let me tell you uh, the majesty. Let me tell you the freedom that we have in our country. Paul's saying, pray that he will be the ambassador that he's supposed to be. Pray that he will be an ambassador. And by the way, ambassadors are supposed to be very loyal people. An ambassador that just stays in his little closet and doesn't do anything. It's time for him to come home. And he says, he says in verse 20, for which I'm an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak. And what's that next word? Boldly. See how the prayer is? Pray for me. I mean, Paul, doesn't Paul seem like a pretty bold person anyways? He says, man, when I give the gospel, please pray that I'm, I'm bold, that I'm, I speak as I ought to speak, boldly as I ought to speak. I had that phrase underlined. Because if Paul the Apostle, Paul, the great church planner, if he says, I, I need prayer to be bold, to say the things that I want to do, what is that? Give you an idea of. Why does he want this prayer? How is he feeling? Is he feeling bold? No. He's not, he's not feeling very bold. He's not feeling like communicating everything that he needs to pray. You know, is Ephesians a prison epistle? can't remember because I don't remember in my bonds being mentioned. But of all, all the persecution, all the places that he's going, surely uh, he needs to be bold. And then in verses uh, 21 through 24, uh, I'm just going to read it and then make a couple of comments. But that you may also know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. All right, so this is, this is who Tychicus is. Tychicus is Paul's postman. He's the one that brought this letter, okay? He brings the letter, and, and they give it to him, and, and I'm sure they're ready to read it, read it to the church. And then they, how is Paul doing? What is he doing? Is he eating right? He had a really uh, bad eye infection. Has he gotten better? And, and, and Paul says, I have Tychicus. You ask him everything and he knows everything. But also he's got a lot of questions for you guys. Because uh, some things I didn't write in scripture. I want to know how these families are and everything like that. This is as real as it gets, folks. Sometimes when we read Scripture, we think that it's from a, uh, you know, it's, it's just so different from anything that we communicate. But this is as basic as it gets. Paul loved this church. This church loved Paul. And he says, I wish I could be there. Uh, uh, he couldn't make a Zoom call. The Internet wasn't working at that, that moment. And so instead of that, he sends a personal representative, Tychicus, with this letter. And this letter was... Uh, if you ever get a chance to see how they wrote in Greek, 
It's interesting. Do you guys know that the book of Ephesians wasn't divided into chapters? It wasn't divided into verses. Here's something that might shock you. It wasn't even divided into words. All, there, there were no spaces between the words. It was all, and, and you might go, oh, how do you do that? I, I bet you that if you wrote uh, a, a letter that, that all the spaces were removed, it would be difficult at first, but as you're going, you just get used to it, and then you go. And, uh, and that's the kind of letter he wrote, and it was all in capital letters. Uh, so this is, this is really interesting. In the Greek, there's no punctuation, everything like that. So all the punctuation that we see, all of the, uh, all the different things that we see, is, uh, is really for our benefit. It wasn't there in the beginning, you know, to try to help us. Sometimes in the King James Version, you'll see things in italics, which means that, that it wasn't in the original Greek. It doesn't mean that it shouldn't be there. It just means that this thing is added so you could understand context a little bit more and make, make some phraseology um, a little bit easier. So that's Tychicus. And, uh, and then verse 23 and 24, this is what we call a classic Pauline benediction. Pauline from Paul. He says, peace be to the brethren, love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all of them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. That word in sincerity, I, I think, is one of the, uh, one of the most missed uh, words in this whole epistle. Because sometimes when we get to the end bits, we don't read as carefully. But he says, grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Do you know the word in, what, what sincere or sincerity means? It's a, it's a Greek word. It means without wax. What you would do is in the good old days, you would uh, you go to like a market to buy things and you would buy pots. And your more credible pot salesman would be outside. Why? Because things cost money in the ancient world. We know this, right? Time, effort. And in moving some pots or something, one of the pots might have a crack. And what they would do is they would melt wax and seal it with that wax. Now, that's okay if you're filling it with dirt or something like that. But you go home and you try filling it with water, it's going to be like a little drip. And you take it back and you try to complain about it. Hey, I don't know. And so what they would do is they would see if the pot was sincere, that they would hold the pot up towards the sun, and you would be able to see the sunlight magnify the wax if there's any cracks in there. And so if a pot was sincere, it would be genuine, it would be honest, it wouldn't be hiding flaws. It wouldn't be anything other than exactly what it is. And when we say, blessed are those, grace to those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with sincerity. I think sincerity is the biggest thing that we can have in our Christian lives. That we're not trying to put on airs. We're not trying to, again, we're not trying to say all the fancy things. We're just trying to be honest, grow in the Lord. We're trying to um, uh, bear one another's burdens, share our faults one with another. By the way, Sharing faults one with another is not me sharing faith's fault with everybody else. It's me sharing my fault 
Pray for me that I could be bold, that I could be the type of pastor I should be because I get a little bit nervous. That's sincere, isn't it? That's without wax. So we're going to have just a quick prayer, and then we're going to take prayer requests. And don't, let's not be nervous or anything, all right? Father, thank you. Um, God, that you're the God who hears. Um, you're the God who wants to hear. You're the God who actually tells his people, talk to me. I want to hear it. I want to communicate with you back. Speak to me, my promises. So that you will know when I fulfill them. God, you are absolutely everything that we're not. And we recognize that. And we thank you that even though we're clay, we thank you that you have filled the believer with your spirit and that you are conforming us to the image of your son. Be more like him and less like us. Lord, be with us as we pray, as we speak to you, as we share our burdens. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Is it all? Okay. So, with all that being said, let's share some prayer requests. I, 